Hello everyone, I'm Jai Rai, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial slash review of Dehancer Pro, which is a film emulation plugin, uh, which is similar to DaVinci Resolve Studios um, Film Looks Creator. I'm going to be using Osmo Pocket 3 footage uh, that's shot in D-Log M 10-bit. Now, Dehancer did reach out to me asking me to review their plugin and you know i accept it because yeah i like tools like these so so yeah we're just going to be using that plugin in davinci resolve studio and yeah now i guess we can get started so according to dehancer uh they want you to do a color transform before you put in the plugin so we're just going to make a few nodes here they also want you to have the footage corrected so we're just going to do some minor corrections to the footage uh, before we apply our color space transform and eventually the plugin. So I guess I can add one more node here and we can apply a color space transform on the third node. Now what I like to do is I actually like using DaVinci Wide Gamut, but DJI D Gamut also works. Now, the most important thing is to keep the gamma, the input gammas at either gamma 2.4 or rec 709. So we're going to do that right now. Now, the output color space will be rec 709. And the output gamma will also be rec 709. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna make a little adjustment here to the um, white balance. I'm just gonna warm it up a little bit because it looks a little, little blue to me. Uh, that seems fine. Maybe here, we'll just add a little, a little bit more saturation. And now um, on this fourth uh, node, we're just gonna add the Dehancer plugin. Now this plugin is pretty pretty comprehensive. There is a lot of things here that I don't really even know what it does, but if it somehow makes the footage look good and look better, then you know, I don't mind using it. So that's what we're going to do here. You have a lot of film stocks to choose from. Honestly, the the options here are too much for me, so I'm just going to stick to um something I like. I found that Kodak Vision 3 500T uh, looks good to my eye. So I'm going to use that as my film stock and uh, we'll just go from there. Now film developer, um, uh, let's see what this does. I, I guess it just adds more contrast. I mean, it does say it in the name, but yeah. I'm not seeing much of a difference and I don't want to turn it all the way up. So I'm just not going to mess with film developer at the moment. Um, film compression. Okay, it um, reduces the highlights a bit. Um, I don't know if I want to keep that on. Um, we'll just leave that as is for expand. Um, that's on by default. So let's see what it does. Maybe I can increase this by a tad bit, just a tad. Yeah. Now for print, you can choose Kodak 2383, which is a pretty popular print. It just makes the image more contrasty, I guess. There's also like a bluish hue to the film stock, which doesn't look too bad, but I'm liking the the less contrasty look on this particular image. So we're just going to keep print off for now. Now the color head I find is where you would get most of your look from. This is where you would develop your look. And um, yeah, I think this part of the program is where you'd probably end up spending the most time refining your look. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to enable this and mess around with the sliders a bit. So let's go for the blue. Not too much, but just so that we can give the blues in this particular clip uh, a little boost, uh, but not by much. 
let's see what does this do i'm not liking the hues here so i'm, I'm just gonna leave that at zero cyan and red okay i'm kind of liking what is this does so i'm just gonna put this towards cyan just a little uh now we can see the before and after it's looking a lot cooler now which isn't that bad honestly in my humble opinion but now um we can mess with split toning uh in this portion of um the color head section for the shadow tone we can either go blue or warm um but i think i'm liking i'm think i'm liking the warm more so i'm just gonna boost this up by a little bit not much i think for the mid-tones i'm just going to boost it a, uh, a little bit as well maybe around there maybe the highlights i don't really think i need to mess with much so um yeah the overall look for this image is this which granted it, it doesn't do much but um i kind of like how it looks now now for film grain i'm not really a big fan of film grain so i'm just gonna have this disabled for halation in bloom this particular scene doesn't really have lights in it but if you did have lights and you wanted that feeling that it was shot on film then i would turn these three settings on but since I don't have any bulbs or any lights in this particular clip, I'm not going to have them on. But if I did, then I would just turn these on. And as you can see, it doesn't really do much to the overall clip. So I'm just going to leave this off. Now, there are so many parameters here you can change. And honestly, like I don't even know what half of this does. Uh, film damage. I don't think I want to mess with because it would probably it either won't do much or alter my clip entirely. And I'm not seeing anything, so I'm not going to mess with this parameter here. Film breath. Oh. I'm not seeing much of a change when I turn it on, so I'm just not gonna have it on. Now gate weave, I think it punches in a little bit and I think that's all it does, but I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna leave that off. For overscan, um, I don't know what it does, but if, if we were to turn this on, uh, I guess it makes it look like it's shot on a roll of film, which honestly I'm not a fan of. So we're going to keep that off. Now for vignette, um, this one is either hit or miss, but I think if I were to turn this on, it wouldn't look so bad. I kind of like the vignette here, so I'm going to leave the vignette on. For monitor, I'm not going to mess with this. Output, okay, not going to mess with that. LUT generator, oh, that's if you want to turn this into a LUT and options quality let's go with high now i think the results for this particular clip looks good it definitely looks better than uh than it was when it wasn't graded but it's definitely better than uh, our starting point which was here yeah i kind of like how it looks overall so we'll just keep this grade now i have another clip here um, what I'm planning on doing is probably I'm just going to take the grade that I had on the first clip and just copy it over. And yeah, that actually looks pretty good right off the bat. We can just maybe adjust the parameters and the notes before the transform just so we have a good overall like um, starting point. I'm actually liking the warmness of this image, so I'm going to just keep this great, actually. But I'm going to do like little minor adjustments um, on the dehancer side and um, see if we can get uh, see if we can refine our clip here. I'm just going to mess around with the color head 
and um maybe if i maybe i can mess with the print also um let me see if i like the results that i get from this and actually i think i prefer with the print on for this particular clip but now it's looking a bit more yellow so i'm just going to set this um a bit cooler there i think i think that looks good and need to go back to the plugin here so yeah i'm just gonna leave the print enabled here on this particular clip and just change the parameters in the color head section maybe we just reduce this a bit here like that and for the shadows we can probably split tone this a bit and make the shadows a bit cooler not by much but i think that will do the mid tones are already they already look good but actually i'll just leave this at default and for the highlights uh since we want to do a split tone we can just go a bit warmer here uh, i think there that looks good this is before and this is after it's um not a huge difference but yeah i kind of like the look that this thing gives so i'm just gonna keep it here and then again um we don't have any lights in this particular clip so i'm not gonna have halation or bloom here um all these parameters i'm gonna keep off and maybe i'll just keep the vignette on um this is it with it on and off i yeah i like the overall look um of the vignette so we're just gonna keep that on now for a third clip i think this was shot during golden hour or during sunset and on top of a, a skyscraper called uh shibuya sky and we're gonna do what we did earlier which is copy the grade from the previous clip so we're just going to middle mouse click here and yeah that actually looks pretty good uh it looks a bit blue or purplish but um in my opinion it doesn't look bad we can actually choose to keep it like this if we want there's nothing wrong with the grade um the only thing i would do is probably is uh change the exposure a bit uh, maybe lift the gamma a tad bit so it doesn't look too dark about there yeah that looks good to my eye at least maybe reduce the shadows a bit not by much but yeah there and i think all these clips look good to my eye now um the program is pretty straightforward you just color correct your uh clip color space transform and put in the plugin there is a lot of parameters you can change but for my use case uh i don't need half of the parameters um here the answer is kind of an expensive plugin in my opinion but if you're serious about film emulation and having a more i guess realistic film look then this plugin might be for you uh, i think some of the film stocks in this plugin have a great look to them i know the 500t looks good just um without any parameter changes and of course uh, you can always change uh the overall look using the color head um for the most part you can grade pretty quickly with dehancer pro now if you are interested in something like this i do have a affiliate code that you can use uh, i think you can get like 10 percent off on the price of dehancer pro but uh yeah that's all i have for now i'll see y'all in the next video bye